Hey guys, so I came back and today we are going to talk more about migrations. So in the previous video we discussed some basic stuff about migrations and now we will discuss more advanced stuff. So I think we can start uh, right away. And uh, yeah. So basically in the previous video I showed you that we had this uh, different migration files that were uh, dependent on each other. And basically uh, what we did, we just kind of created new file and then migrate to that. Uh, but what you can also do is you can actually go back. So you can actually choose uh, to reverse your migrations to one of these files. Uh, for example, let's reverse to this one. For that you say migrate, the application name, and you choose the number of migration that you want to that you want to reverse to. And as you can see, we unapplied 15th, 14th and 13th migration. And then you can actually very easily go back, just migrate and uh, you can see that you applied all the migrations that you uh, had unapplied before. Uh, so this is one thing that I wanted to show you that you might need in your projects. The other thing I want to show you is some problematic stuff with Django. So for example, you might have a custom field. So as you can see here, when we, for example, alter or add or remove or remove field, we specify uh, the generic field from the models, but sometimes we might also uh, have some migrations related to custom fields that we, that we create. So let me just so let me just import uh, this example from a Django documentation, and let's actually create the field. It doesn't matter what it is; it's just uh, something that I imported just to show you uh, the problems that you can encounter. So let's make migrations here. And now we have this file here. And you can see that in, for example, this file, in the field, we referenced uh, something that we import from basic Django models. And uh, basically this ja basic Django models will always be there. But this field that we are referencing here, uh, we import from administration models hand field. So basically we import exactly this one. And basically if we, for example, want to delete this field at some point of time, and we want to make migrations uh, to delete this field. You can see that we have an error because our models doesn't have uh, attribute hand field. So basically when you create custom field and then you uh, reference it somewhere uh, in your models and then when you actually delete this reference and you and this uh, new custom field becomes obsolete, you actually need to show that it is deprecated. And so for that, we actually return the definition of this field, but now we just, uh, uh, we don't have any functionality here, we just uh, uh, give this system check deprecated details. And we say that this hand field was deprecated. And now if we want to actually make migration, it's okay. So yeah, this is what I want to show you regarding custom fields. 
so you need to be careful with that if you are going to create custom fields and then for example you might want to remove it so uh, yeah let's go to the next topic and the next topic will be uh, data migration so basically in the previous video I'll show you uh, I, I talked with you about the fact that you can actually write your own migration files and sometimes you actually need it and in this video I want to actually show you how you would do that so let's create file and call it custom migration EY so let's uh, just copy the basic structure to not reinvent the wheel and uh, yeah let's say that the dependency here will be 17 remove student field so basically this file and now actually in uh, operations we don't just use basic remove field alter field and other functions what we do is we say migrations in python and here we uh, provide any function that we want to actually uh, apply while we migrate for example about uh, combining name and age so let's create a function so for example let's go to shell and we have here different students for example this uh, student with id1 it has name new guy 22 um, and it has well let's actually create a new uh, new student John and age will be 22 for example let's save the student and we can see that the name of the student John and age is 22 so let's imagine that for some reason we need to uh, migrate the data in our project and we need to actually combine age and name into the name field so basically if there was a guy with name john and id uh, if age 22 then it's uh, this guy will be should be migrated to the name john 22 so in the name we want to combine these two uh, fields here um, again i don't have any reasons right now for uh, for, for this uh, for, to do that but uh, you can imagine for example that you would have name and second name and you need to combine it to just uh, one name and then delete this field for example but uh, I'm a little bit too lazy to actually create this kind of model so the example that I uh, came up with is to combine the name and age to uh, one field name I hope that wasn't confusing so let's actually define this uh, function name age to name let's call it like that for example we say apps and schema editor here now let's import student administration student and for student in all the students we say s name equals s name plus string plus like that plus s h let's uh, put it into string 2 and then save students 
and let's actually now put it here. So now let's migrate. We didn't close the dependencies here. Okay, finally. Now, as you can see, we applied custom migration. And now here in the shell, as you can see here, we called the name of this, uh, of this uh, student. And now if you call the name, it will be the same because we didn't actually refresh uh, our students. So let's actually see all the students and let's see the latest one that we have just created. Get ID 32. As you can see here, uh, this was the ID of the object that we created. So now let's actually make uh, a refreshed call to the database. And as you can see, now the name of the student is actually John 22, because we combined, combined his name and age into one field called name. So yeah, um, this is uh, how you can actually make data, data migration, but that's not all, because we might have some problems here if you want to actually reverse migrations to, for example, here. You can see that the custom migration is not reversible. It is because we actually need to provide reverse code, for example, uh, separate names. I will not actually write the code because I'm too lazy to do that. But uh, I mean, you get the idea, I hope, uh, that uh, this first function is actually we use that when we migrate. And then this function we would use when we reverse migration. So basically here we would write uh, the code to separate uh, name into name and age. But I'm too lazy to actually write down this code. So I just wanted to show you that if we provide this reverse code, we actually can reverse back to, um, to other migrations. So we can unapply these custom migrations too. Um, yeah, this is really complicated topic. And there are a lot of other things that I didn't discuss here because uh, the writing, writing migrations is not something that you would do uh, like on a regular basis. You need to have some particular reasons to actually make da data migrations. And basically based on your task, uh, you'll write uh, different uh, stuff here. But here in this lesson, I just wanted to show you the basic information on uh, how you can do that data migration, how you can write function for migration, how you can write the function to a reverse migration, and how you can actually apply this migration function and reverse code functions. And I guess uh, the last thing that I wanted to show you in this lesson is that you can squash migrations. So basically, you can see that we got uh, already 17 plus here 18 migrations. And uh, there is a lot of stuff here that we might not want to have in separate files, but we want to have in one file. And to do that, we actually say squash migrations administration. And we specify that we want to squash files from the first one to the fifth one. Yes, I want to proceed. And now, as you can see, that we actually squashed
all the migrations here and replaced it with this code. So basically, I guess that's all I wanted to show you. Um, this is more advanced stuff. Of course, I didn't uh, discuss all the details about squashing, all the details about writing migrations, because it's really complicated topics. And uh, basically, if you want, you can take a look at the documentation. And here I wanted to just uh, show you what is possible to do in Django. And I guess this is kind of the main um, main uh, goal of my channel is basically I want to show you what is possible within Django, you know, all the stuff that you can do. And then if you are interested in some per something particular, right, like writing migrations, you can actually uh, go and check out information about that. So I hope this lesson was useful and as usual, please support me, give me likes, comments, subscriptions. I really appreciate that and thank you.